I mean, it's been on the map for a while now, hasn't it? Five years, something more than that. Ten years, look at that, fucking hell. I guess any promoter's sort of dream is, is starting a festival. I guess my eclectic tastes in music led to Field Day being quite diverse right from the start in terms of it not just being about one type and style of music and the village fate element was always key right from the start. The very first Field Day was called Return of the Rural, so the village, countryside, rural part it's like bringing the countryside to the city. For me, it's the, the lineup that, that uh, kills it for me every year. Like I look at the list of bands and I want to see 15, 20 things all on the same day, clashing at the same time. We played the first one in the middle of the afternoon. And it was one of our first ever gigs, actually, with the, the lineup that we played with. And we were terrified and everything broke. And, and then last year we came back and headlined the main stage. Being at a bunch of them in between and seeing that happen has been really amazing. <laughs> I think the main thing is it's very much about new music mainly. So I remember the very first one bumping into some friends of mine and they literally had lists in their pockets of acts they wanted to see. Yeah, I think a couple of real standout performances was uh, Justice in the first year, 2007, and uh, Moderat when they headlined in, I think 2011, was a brilliant performance as well. Field Day has asserted the kind of status of quite a few bands like us and, and kind of helped us in, in a kind of broader sense just by like putting its stock in us from, from the beginning. Memories over the years, a very special moment was the first year we booked Umani Diabate, which was maybe the second or the third year of Field Day. It was the first time we'd booked a world artist and there was a lot of discussion between the partners of Field Day about how much money we were spending on this artist that no one else other than me had heard of. And they were like, you know, you can get three or four real indie bands for that. I was a bit nervous about what would happen on the day and he headlined one of the tents up against Mogwai. And the tent was completely full and it was just a very special moment. And I just thought, this, this opens a lot of doors now. <laughs> Day are just as eclectic as the lineup. Like you always see so much stuff that you like never knew existed, never knew about. It seems that they have like recurring artists that have stayed with them since day one. They sort of feel like like field day veterans. Well, for me, it's about the the acts that I've seen over the years. People like Silver Apples are like absolute heroes of mine. I never ever saw thought that I'd see them play to see the Thomas Mafuna on the main stage in the middle of the day and people loving it. It's just uh, for me that's the thing that's unique about it. I think it's really incredible that um, Field Day has been able to maintain this level of longevity. Really, for me, that's a testament to the curation. So yeah, it's about the quality of the music. London needs everything it's got right now to be positive about music and a reminder to everybody that, you know, musical events are of huge kind of cultural importance, that everybody, stuff like this is obviously absolutely crucial. Yeah.